What is up guys? Welcome to my Sony Vegas tutorial. So um, basically it was requested that I show kind of how I render and uh, set everything up in Vegas. Um, so there's going to be timestamps below. If you already know how to set up a session and get going, then you can skip to how we do color correction or just my render setting, stuff like that. So I, I will put a disclaimer right at the front of this video. I'm not an expert in Sony Vegas, so forgive me if you see something that's not exactly correct, but this is just how I do things. And if you're interested in that, then stick around. So First things first, you're gonna notice this is Movie Studio Platinum, and you're gonna be like, well, that's not Sony Vegas. Basically, it's the dumbed down version of Sony Vegas. So I've used Sony Vegas 11 Pro, like a cracked version, and it's just giving me trouble. Uh, it was unstable, constantly crashing on me, and uh, the really advanced features that it had, I wasn't using. So I actually had an old copy of Movie Studio Platinum 11 that I just upgraded through Sony's website for like $30 or $50, excuse me. So I got some awesome software for 50 bucks and you know, uh, Vegas Pro is like $700 if you buy it legit. This is like $70 to buy it legit and it has all the features that you're going to need. If you're doing gameplay stuff like I am, this is all you need. You don't need uh, the $700 program that Sony Vegas Pro has. It has all everything like you can render in 4k you can take full advantage of your computer i mean a lot of programs you know if you get the lower end they'll like dumb down how much cpu power you can use not this one it's all out there i'll show you all the features as we get into it for this demonstration i'm just going to pull in a little uh a CSGO clip and the first thing I always do just so I don't forget uh, right off the bat is right click it hit properties and disable resampling basically resampling is used for <laughs> a number of things but whenever we're recording in 60 FPS basically we don't need resampling resampling kind of fills in the blanks so to speak if we have a different frame rate than what our final render frame rate is going to be at Right now, if you're just recording at 30 FPS or 60 FPS, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll be just fine here. So, so before we get too far into this, I'm gonna show you my project properties and how I set things up. So I have templates here. This is my uh, 60 FPS, 1080p. This is basically what's just happening in Vegas. So I apologize, like I said, if you've already, you already know how to set up a session, but I'm just starting from square one. So I just do 1920 by uh, 1080, 60 FPS, and I, use the full resolution render quality at best and turn off the interlace method. Um, so then I just hit okay. And then another thing you're gonna notice in your preferences and go to your video tab, I set it up to allow Vegas to have a lot of my, my computer power. So I have 16 gigs of RAM, I give 10 gigs of that to Vegas. I don't run a lot of stuff in the background when I'm doing video editing. So it's not like I'm really taking away from uh, my computer if I give it a lot of RAM. And from what I understand, in Vegas, uh, your dynamic RAM preview is also how much RAM it will use when it's rendering. So you could get away with only needing like maybe a gig of preview RAM, but when it comes to rendering, that RAM is gonna help a lot. Um, and again, my render threads, I have eight. So I set that to eight, and then you can set up your GPU to help accelerate your video rendering. And uh, you can use some effects and use your GPU to render out some effects on your tracks to take load off your CPU. But uh, I won't get too in depth into that right now, but this is just how I have things set up. Make sure your GPU is enabled. It will help render times and uh, make sure you have the 64 bit version. Cause I think like the 32 bit version limits you to like one gig of RAM and only four threads of your CPU. And you can't turn on GPU acceleration, I don't believe so. Yeah, 64-bit is definitely where it's at. So make sure you're not getting ripped off on what your computer can potentially do. So if I remember correctly, Vegas 13 does look a little bit different than 11. So a few things are slightly off here. So I'll just go in here and uh, kind of cut up my clip. And that's about all I need. I'm not gonna add text to this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete. These are just default tracks that are uh, in the Platinum Edition whenever you pull it up. So. What I like to do as far as uh, like color correction goes, I know a lot of people like to just pull their color corrector right on the clip, but the way I see it is if I put it on the track, then it's affecting anything that's on that track. And I don't have to be running multiple instances of the color corrector for every little clip that I have. You know, if it's just on the track, then all that video is running through and I'm not wasting uh, power, nor am I having to reset settings for every single clip. So if you just put it on the track, it saves a lot of a headache. And uh, I use color curves and color corrector. Of course, I can't find it now. So um, I'll link a video down below to AJ Likes Gaming. This is uh, his tip on uh, getting your color correction right in the first place. So if you just put on the color corrector and start messing with saturation, 
uh, basically your colors can get really funky. If you don't have the white, uh, white balance kind of set before, uh, then you just go into color correcting. It's going to look weird. So what you can use first is use this, uh, color curves to kind of bring out the white and it smooths it out. So with it off and then with it on, so you can see it makes it pop. And especially from a shadow play, uh, file shadow play kind of washes out images. I probably wouldn't do anything quite this drastic if it was just um, uh, a DX Tori recording because DX Tori actually seems to keep the colors pretty true. But you can go through like you're, you're seeing me do here and kind of adjust your different colors and I might take that down just a touch there. And obviously your mileage is going to vary on this. Uh, my settings and what you're using as you know your your image that you're correcting. I just like to find something that has a little bit of everything in the background. So obviously we're playing Dust 2. I know what it looks like. I just got to make sure it looks like that again in Sony Vegas. So I don't try to go over the top with uh, making the colors or anything. I'm not trying to make like a full on frag movie. I'm just trying to um, make it look more like it looked to me whenever I was actually playing the game. So. Um, that's where I'll start is get my color curves correct. So I'll go to another image that's a little bit better here. So I'm looking down here and you can see it just makes the colors pop. So under the color corrector, I just use the custom tab here and then I'll turn up the saturation and really get it uh, probably around 1.5 is where I personally like. You can go lower or higher, kind of depending on what it is. That might actually be a little bit much, but okay. So you can see the the saturation I have here. Now, if I take off the color curves, you can see like some of the blue sky is really popping, but some of this other stuff looks a little funky down here. So it really just uh, smooths out the image and everything. So I won't do much as far as actual color correction. I might kind of bring the wheel around and just make sure what might be popping through a little bit. You know, Dust 2 is kind of a yellowish map and I'm kind of missing some of that. So I might add some back in the high in there. And uh, yeah, let's play that back. So that looks about right to me. I do have another monitor over here that I'll sometimes take my image over to and just double check. It has a little bit different colors and everything like that. So um, then the next thing I'll check is just some action to make sure, especially when I go into tunnels, it's really dark in there and you don't want your colors to be so saturated or use so much color correction that when you get in a dark area you can't see anything so when I go in this tunnel I'll actually be able to see so I can still see you know I can still see all the colors and everything and down there otherwise you know if I went uh, with too much on the um, the color curve or too much saturation being down here might be you know too dark or something so just double check that and that's about all I'll do in the uh, the color correction department so And you know, just check it in a few different spots to make sure it looks natural everywhere because <laughs> you can just sit there and tweak one little image and you might be tweaking it to look really good there. But if you go to a different, you know, a spot of the map, it might look really weird. So again, just double check your work. And that's about it as far as the color correction goes. So as you can see, I've gotten my clip down to about 30 seconds. I'm just going to do this uh, really quickly, show you my few different ways that I render and kind of a couple different reasons why I render uh, different things in different ways. So uh, once you have what you want to render, basically you just take your uh, selection here. That's how I do it in th uh, Vegas 13. It's kind of weird. You have to go to make movie and then to my hard drive. I don't know why they changed this, but basically this is going to be the render as screen. There's just like 10 more mouse clicks now. <laughs> I don't know why they decided to do that. So uh, one I do use is the main concept ABC AAC, and I do have two or three presets down here for my different uh, resolutions. So I've been experimenting with 4K and 2K, and to me it's not really worth it unless it's a kind of a montage kind of thing. Are you really emphasizing on the gameplay? Because honestly, I realize whenever I go watch a video, I'm usually watching it at 720p, maybe 1080p. Uh, usually I'm not going to wait for it to load at 4K or whatever, especially since it's not technically 4K. The only reason people render at 4K is because YouTube knocks down the quality so much. So basically if we upscale it, 
YouTube's knocking down the quality again, so hopefully we'll end up somewhere around 1080p by the time YouTube uh, knocks everything down. So there's a few things you can do to negate some of the pixelation that happens on YouTube, but for the most part, I figure 1080p is about as good as I need to do for commentary stuff. And so basically uh, I have a template, but I just started with the internet 1080p template and uh, one thing you want to do is make sure your profile is on baseline. So if you've ever seen kind of the granular stuff going on on YouTube, that's oftentimes because the profile was set to like main or high when it should have been on baseline. I'm not exactly sure why, but I researched it. Somebody said something about this. I tried it and it worked. So um, that's where I'll start there. And then with the constant bitrate, uh, again, make sure you have a pic pixel aspect ratio of one. With the bitrate, I'll start around 28 million. You can go up to 50 million if you're doing like 2K, 4K stuff. For uh, 1080p though, I'm just concerned with uh, about 28 million. And we will compress this again in, um, in Handbrake, and I'll get to that later. So remember, if you're doing AVC, AAC, you're probably gonna wanna compress it again, especially since we're using a constant bitrate. Uh, you can use a variable bitrate, but I prefer to use a constant and then compress it afterwards. Uh, Vegas has a funky way of doing things when you use a variable bitrate that I've found, so I'd rather do it constant and then let Handbrake take care of it. It seems to have a better um, logarithmic way of doing things. I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but it seems like the quality turns out better. So I'm going to use 28 million constant bitrate, and then I'm going to use... Uh, uh, go over to system and check if your GPU is available. Remember, we enabled it in our options. And then um, if you have AMD, it's going to be OpenCL. If you have NVIDIA, it's going to be CUDA. So I'm going to choose CUDA because that's available for me. On project, we're going to make sure we're using the best render quality. Uh, everything else can stay the same pretty much through here. And I'll just hit OK. And then... I'm going to render this out because I want to show you kind of the differences in file size. So I'm going to render this out and then we'll move on to the next one. Alrighty guys, so the next one we're going to use is the WMV11. If you guys have watched Jack Frag's video on how he renders and everything, this is basically to the T on that. Um, uh, basically you would choose like an 8 megabit per second HD. Uh, we're going to use CBR on the audio and then we're going to use VBR on the uh, video. We're going to turn it down to 86% because there's very negligible difference between 90 or 100 and uh, 86. So here I will do 1920 by 1080 and we'll make it uh, 30 FPS again. And then I'm going to make my pixel aspect ratio one square. So, and then we're going to go over to best quality settings. Everything else is going to take care of itself. And that's all you need to do here. Remember, this is a CPU render, so we're not going to be able to take advantage of our graphics card during this render. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but that's not a huge deal. I really like the quality of this render, and uh, we'll compare the two when we get done with this. So I'll go ahead and render this, and then we'll uh, take a look at the files. Alrighty guys, so I got the renders finally done and we're going to take a look at the file sizes. So the WMV is about 60 megabytes and the AVC AAC is about uh, 100 megabytes. So these are pretty big files for uh, 30 seconds of video. Uh, but you notice the, the MP4 video is almost twice the size. So that's because we use the constant bit rate and then the WMV was using the variable bit rate. Uh, the WMV seems to handle a variable bit rate better than the MP4. That's why I like using the constant bit rate on the MP4. Like I said, uh, I would rather compress it later and use um, Handbrake to do that. So I'll just quickly play uh, the clip and you can kind of tell, I hope through um, YouTube, how the quality is. Here and actually uh, watch the cross from... Uh so that was the MP4 and pay attention to the colors. Uh, watch the cross from uh... so I don't know if that came through on YouTube but to me the WMV has a lot brighter colors the mp4 tends to darken colors for some reason I'm not exactly sure but keep that in mind if you are going to render an mp4 maybe leave it a little bit brighter than you normally would because it it takes the dark colors and makes them kind of the blacks are a little bit deeper, it seems like. So um, just a heads up on that. But uh, now on to Handbrake, how we would actually make this a little bit smaller of a file. So say you did want to do MP4. Um, we 
maybe you recorded a 4K montage or something like that. So I have two files here. So I'm going to take the MP4 video that we had, and I'm going to go ahead and send it out to compressed renders, and then I'll just call this, you know, how to Sony Vegas comp. And then the settings that I use, I have a little preset here called all comp, and I'll go through everything that I change. So basically we're just going to use uh, stock everything on this, this uh, picture. Um, on the filters, we're not going to use anything. In video, we're going to change a couple things here. So uh, again, Handbrake is linked down below. It's just a video compression software. Uh, we're going to use H.264. We're going to use the same as source uh, our frame rate. So that's going to be 30 frames per second. A constant frame rate. Um, we're not going to use anything here. Remember, baseline, again, we don't want to add that pixelation that uh, was in when we wouldn't have used anything like that. Uh, as far as your X264 preset goes, I like slow. I find anything past slow to have diminishing returns. Basically, the slower it is, the better compression you're going to get in the smaller file size. So um, you can go to super slow, but it's going to make it such a long compression time that it's really not worth it. So slow seems to be the happy medium for me with my processor. See what your computer can do and if it, <laughs> what's tolerable, really. Uh, and then I'm going to use a constant quality, uh, an F21. You can crank this up a little bit more. I wouldn't go past 23 personally, but uh, that's where we're going to start. And then I'm just going to hit start on this. It's going to go ahead and run through the clip. Alrighty guys, well everything has finished compressing, so let's take a look at our MP4. This is our original video from the AAC, the AVC AAC video was uh, about 100 meg. Uh, our WMV, our other render, was about uh, 60 meg, and then our compressed is actually 50, so it cut our file size almost in half, which is incredibly good, and I'll show you the quality real quick again. Watch the cross from... Uh, So the quality is still there. Basically what it did is uh, all the extra bandwidth that I gave uh, the bitrate, basically, I've just taken out everything that we don't need. That's what compression is doing, really. So um, that's why I like using a big bandwidth and then compressing it later so I can let Vegas kind of just flow out as much room as it needs and I'll go back and trim it down later rather than trying to trim it right out of Vegas. Um, I know my first render will be just how I intended and then I'll let Handbrake do its thing and knock down the video size. So those are the different uh, settings that I use. I generally use the WMV11 because it's kind of a, a set it and forget about it kind of thing. The MP4 seems to be a little bit finicky, especially like the colors I was talking about. Those dark spots can show up, especially in Battlefield. There's a lot of like, uh, if you play on Operation Locker, you know, there's a lot of dark corners and stuff that might not come through, especially once it hits YouTube. You know, remember YouTube knocking down the quality even more. And if it's not clear, that could be really dark. So keep that in mind. I think that's about everything when it comes to Vegas and how I render everything. If you have any more questions, always feel free uh, to leave a comment down below. And thank you guys for checking out this video and I'll talk to you later.